Well, welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us again. The next in our uh, series of uh, workshop meetup events. Um, I'm your host this evening. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Sath. I'm one of the, the organisers at the Future of Work in Scotland meetup group. Um, I'm delighted to be hosting this one as we're doing it in collaboration with our friends at Lean Agile London meetup. So that's awesome. If there's anyone who's joined us from uh, the London meetup group, a uh, warm welcome to you all. Um, before um, I introduce our uh, speaker this evening, just the usual formalities. Uh, for those of you who haven't joined us before, uh, we do have a code of conduct. Um, we just ask that everybody be respectful to one another. Um, we want everyone to have a harassment-free experience. We do have a detailed code of conduct available to you in Hive in our Slack channel. If you want to go and read that, please do so and familiarise yourself with it. Uh, in terms of the Q&A, usually I think those of you who've joined us before are familiar with our format, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm told by uh, my, uh, my good friend that he wants to take a slightly different approach to that this evening, so I'm not going to preempt anything that he's hoping to do, so I'm really looking forward to how he wants to tackle that. Um, and we'll do some community announcements at the end, as we, as we always do, as we bring the session to a close. Uh, and with that, I, I'm uh, enormously um, pleased to be welcoming our, our guest speaker, Rosie Cazell, uh, this evening. Uh, for this session, uh, Bozzi and I have known each other for a good few years now. Uh, we've, we've been working together for a while. Um, I kind of sit on the BCS. Bozzi shares that. Um, alongside that, in the day job, Bozzi is um, he's a business agility consultant and he's a long time established and experienced trainer and specializes in Kanban, Scrum, and collaboration frameworks. Um, he's also an international speaker, and I've heard him speak before on a number of occasions. And he's also the uh, organiser of what is now Lean Agile London Conference, which previously used to be LLKD. And, and I was fortunate enough to work with him to organise and deliver the event in 2018, it would have been. So, yeah, delighted to have Jose here tonight, and I'm a big fan of his work and his approach. So uh, yeah, really looking forward to the session. Over to you, Jose. Okay. Thank you, Seth. Um, so welcome, everyone. Um, I think um, given the names of people that I know around, we've got people from, from quite a, a wide spread. Um, so welcome, and thank you for being here. Um, this talk started a conversation with, with Seth and I saying like, well, we're all, we're all really learning very fast um, how to become virtual. So um, what we've done in the, last few, in the last few days or the last few weeks is obviously we've been, we're all learning, we're all suddenly virtual and we've just been compiling our expertise and expertise of other people of what recommendations they're saying about how to how to survive and how to be successful organizing virtual events, hopefully awesome virtual events, okay? So what I wanna to try to do in the next hour or so is to provide a, a series of tips, ideas, suggestions, things that we have re been reading about, um, things that we are practicing or we are experimenting with, um, but um, we're all learning at the moment. So um, this is the current state of misunderstanding as our friend Klaus Leopold likes to say. Um, one of the things in this session, um, you will see me doing the presentation and um, in virtual environments, tip number one, the role of having a producer behind the scenes helping out with running the session, it's becoming fundamental. So my colleague, John Paul Bailey, JP Bailey, is today working as a, as a producer behind the scenes. Um, Helping, helping me with the chat, with the monitoring the communications, monitoring things, and getting the technology running so that I can concentrate on the presentation itself. Um, I did say before, um, I am based in Canterbury in the UK, um, lockdown for the last two months. Um, I guess that there's people from everyone everywhere else. So if you liked, I mean, you see my, my name, my, my location, if you like to change, your location, then you can, um, it will be good to see where are you based. Um, if there's any te technical issue with Zoom, what we will do is that we will try to 
restore the connection the session within five minutes same link say everything if we cannot recover in five minutes then we will have to abandon the session we we are not going to try to go into another tool or anything but um just for um as a recovery plan is that if, if for any reason zoom goes down or my connection goes down or anything um within five minutes we will try to recover the session back here if you're not familiar with Zoom, just in case, and in case of your preference, um, on the top right of your screen, especially if you're using laptops um, on your um, iPads, it might be a different location, but you can toggle between um, uh, gallery, uh, gallery mode or uh, presenter mode. I'm not going to be presenting, um, I'm not going to be sharing my screen for most of the session. So um, gallery mode tends to, to work better, but that's your choice. Um, and we will occasionally use uh, the chat room for um, or the chat for um, some some engagement, some some activities. But we are not going to be monitoring the chat for questions. We are going to be um, introducing a tool for um, running questions where you can put the questions. You can upvote them. Hopefully, then we have enough time. There is a bit of risk because it's the as I said, like this is a conversation that Saf and I say, hey, let's do this session. Um, um, it's the first time we're doing it, it's, it's the de debut. We'll see how long it takes as well. Okay, um, so uh, before we start, if you're using the latest uh, version of Zoom, um, I'm gonna stop my share for a second. Um, you will see the uh, um, at, uh, an icon for reactions. So if you're ready to, to go and start, could you give me a thumbs up please? Awesome, as a quick feedback loop, lots of thumbs up there. Cool, so in anything that is, I mean, any sort of activity, but particularly as well in these environments, the, the first things that I will, I will say is, um, you have, it's an invitation to take part in the activities. If you, for any reason, you don't want to take part or it's not working for you, um, you have the, um, the right to pass. So you don't want to be there. Um, just um, you can if you go into the into the meet, into the any breakout room and you don't want to be there, you can just click leave um, leave um, breakout and then you will come to the main lobby. Okay. So there is no obligation for you to take part in those um, activities. Um, for Q and A, um, we're going to use a Slido. It's one of the tools that we are using at the moment. So if you were to join that, um, you go to slido.com and enter that code. Um, what you will have is a, a tool. Let me just get it there for you. Slide, oh, there we go. You have a tool, you have a slider there where you can ask questions. Um, so any questions will be coming here. You can have both the ones that, any question that you think that is important. Hopefully at the end we'll have a few, um, a few minutes to, to, to get some questions and answers. Okay? So, um, slido.com and uh, you will have in the chat the actual code to go in there. Okay. So, what we're gonna do is, um, JP is gonna put you all in uh, breakout rooms and what we'd like you um, to discuss is what would you like to get out of this workshop. Um, we're gonna give you three minutes to do this conversation. It's gonna be probably about um, three or four people maximum in, in per, per breakout room. Um, if you stay on Slido, um, you have a quick poll that says, what would you like to get out of this, of this workshop? If you feel like sharing that, please write it there um, while you're in the breakout rooms. So JP is gonna send you to the, um, to the breakout rooms and you're gonna have three minutes to come back. Hey, Jack. Everyone is back. Hey guys. Okay, uh, as you're coming back, if you're not going into mute, can you please mute yourself for the time being? Um, and if you, if you would not mind, um, go to if you go to Slido and 
select the poll. Um, you could, uh, it would be great if we have uh, things that you are hoping to get out of the session like this, please. One of the interesting things about successful remote working, successful remote um, events is having, it's not just about a combination of, it's a combination of things. It's a, I really like this quote from Lisette Sutherland, which says, is, is a finely tuned combination, many times consciously chosen, of the skill set in, in organizing the meeting, how useful, how useful we are to these kind of environments, um, our own mindset and how we approach the, the events, and the tool set. Um, many times we are focusing on the tool set, um, but uh, both the skill set and mindset matter a lot. Okay. Um, so what we're going to be doing for, for the rest of the session is going through a number of um, suggestions, tips, our experience. And one thing that um, JP in particular has been working on, and we're trying to capture some of the things that are the principles that we should be looking at in order to generate engaging um, meetings that work, um, is what we call the, the six trumps for live virtual sessions, so the six virtual trumps. This is not a political reference. Um, this is homage to the six trams that we have in things like training from the back of a room, if you're familiar with them, um, about how to design good activities, how to design good in-person training and workshops. So for the virtual environment, the six that we, the six that we are looking at at the moment is like, um, first one is like small, it's going to trump, trump a lunch, large. Um, preparation trumps improvisation. Um, simple trumps complicated. Adaptation trumps replication and pairing trumps solo. Um, and, well, no, and the last one is because we are virtual, we don't have to do anything, everything virtually live on online. We can do things off air. Um, so many times we can do off air um, trumping lecture. Okay. Um, so I'm going to cover, go through, through these six and, and put some context to it. Um, to them. I'm not going to do all six in any, in any particular detail. Some of them are going to cover more than others. Okay. First one is going to be um, looking at small trumps large. And the main thing in virtual environments um, for um, small, for about the smaller, putting things smaller, is that things like group size is more important than ever. Um, and the, the size of each one of the activities that we do also matters a lot. So try to keep it small. Uh, it's really tempting to go and do huge things, big things, and overcomplicate things. So use things like, even if you have a group, a large group, um, like, like we have today, um, use the breakout rooms to break things down, to have smaller conversations in small groups. Um, to be able to people to have more more opportunities to participate, to talk, to 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 be engaged. Um, no one likes to be um, listening to someone for an endless time. Um, so keep it short. Um, short presentations with lots of small group activities makes a, lot, a big difference. And in particular, if you're looking at things like require a lot of like um, intellectual activity. Um, things like training classes or brainstorms and things like that, try to keep it to smaller groups. For example, for training, um, all the literature out there is recommending that we don't know, we don't do more than 15 participants. Um, so keep it small as, as, as much as it matters a lot. Okay. Um, so we are, we, we can, we can use a lot of um, breakout rooms. Um, so us again, as a breakout exercise, what I would like you to do is like you're gonna be we're gonna send you to breakout rooms, and what you're gonna have in there, uh, we like you to talk about the pros and cons of using breakout rooms, their advantages and disadvantages, um, and also explore a little bit the sizes of um, your. Um, uh, I'm gonna give you a couple of um, um, types of workshops and, and scenarios. And what we would like you to do is to um, then uh, look at um, how many people do you think you could have? What sort of range of people would you, would you have? So in your chat, you're going to have a link to this Jamboard. Um, the first page 
is gonna is just for you to see it. So I'm just showing it you, um, showing it to you. It's like it will have at the top which sample, um, which breakout room number you have. Um, you can have the pros and cons of using breakout rooms, and then you have here in blue some scenarios of those sessions. Okay. So when you go into the breakout rooms, find the go to the page where you have the right breakout number and enter it with the people in your breakout room. You got another three minutes to do this session. Okay, so JP will be sending you to breakout rooms and there's gonna be about 20 breakouts. Okay, well that reflected my experiences. Yeah. <laughs> Sylvia, we both had the same thing there, didn't we? We did, yeah. Uh huh. So, Jose, over the last three weeks, I've delivered 11 days of virtual events. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, the thing that Sylvia and I were just sharing in our room was we weren't sure what we were supposed to be doing or where we were supposed to be doing it. Yeah. Um, so, been my experience delivering over the last 11 days, that it's very difficult as the presenter to get yes. that transmitted to people so they understand what to do. Yes. Uh, and can act to mm -hmm. answer the question that you've asked. Absolutely. So it's a question of um, refining it and making sure that it's uh, even clearer or trying to be clear about this. Yeah. I, I, um, I found as well for some events having a, um, hmm? uh, a, a helper in each room has really helped. Yeah, unfortunately, there, is a, there was 19 rooms here, so 19 helpers. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. the, 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 the challenge with these things, again, and you see it's like um, we are randomizing who goes into the sessions, for example. And when you're trying to do this, so you have a small group and you could end up with everybody writing on the same page. Or the way we've done this is that you have like a, a groups for each one of you. But it's, it's a question sometimes about, you see, when talking about the, the, the key about tool set, skill set and mindset, for example, in the skill set, my own communications about how to go and do this um, probably was not clear enough there. So um, even clearer. When we do another exercise yeah. later on, it will, it's going to be similar by doing another tool and then it, we'll show you. It, it's going well, Jose, don't worry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's all right, it's all right. It's good. It's certainly okay. replicating real world experiences. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, the, it's the clarity about making it work. But it's interesting to see um, um, the thing about Jamboard as a tool is that it's an extremely simple tool. It's very, very limited what you can do with it. Um, but um, for a simple kind of like whiteboarding um, uh, tool, fairly straightforward to set up and do things like just putting post-its together and things like that. Okay, so um, the next thing that we will look at is this idea, and this is totally um, on point, is the idea of um, preparation. So when we're talking about preparation, even, even with the best preparation, like the very important is like, don't try to improvise. It's, it's even more challenging to get an online session to just hit the sweet spot and make everybody engage and doing doing the things and communicating all those things um when you when you know we've been attending um things from uh, sessions from from people where they're doing this for for years and years and years and the kind of like a skill set that it takes is really really important you can see you can see the art of something really make it make it make this thing really really simple um when it actually is quite complex to do it's, it's really important so as much as we are doing these things, it's really important to be prepared and, and try to prepare all of us, not just the not just the people organizing the session for success. So things that we need to be prepared to deal with is we talk about like technology challenges, um, um, what kind of problems we can have with the technology, the technology, um, what happens if we lose Zoom, for example. Um, the unfamiliarity that we have with environment from both the, 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 the person facilitating the sessions and the participants. So how do we make everybody familiar with, the, with environments while we are not used to them yet? Um, and the other one might be um, another challenge about these things is that we might have misaligned expectations of what is this live virtual um, experience. So 
we might we might come into sessions expecting them to be poor, and that creates a whole a, a whole um, loop on them. Um, so what we're going to do is an, another little exercise, and I'm showing you different options that that we've seen out there and we, we're trying to use. And this one is um, is something that I've seen uh, a guy called Paul Tevis from a company called Vigemus.com, and he uh, the question we're going to do is um, we're talking about preparation and improvisation. So we're going to try to do the anti-pattern, the anti-problem, and what we like us to think is about is how could we reliably design our um, online events um, in the worst possible way so that nothing get done. Everybody has a terrible time. Um, and if you had like things like the leadership of a business and so on, they think that there is like doing things uh, virtually is just totally lost credibility. It will never happen. Okay, so the credibility of doing things um, virtually is, is seriously damaged, okay? So I need you to think um, in your most um, critical and devious ways um, and just um, let's go for it, okay? Uh, what we're gonna have for doing this exercise is we are going to have a, we're gonna use Google Docs for this. So uh, let me uh, share my screen quickly. And I'm going to explain this session, hopefully, a little bit more. Um, JP is going to put uh, on the chat is going to be a link to a Google Doc, um, which sh you should all have access to it. And then we're going to send you two breakout rooms, 20 breakout rooms. So if you land on breakout 20, click the link for breakout, to breakout room 20. If you land on breakout room five, then go to breakout room, click on the breakout room for five, okay? Once you are there, what you will have is um, a pretty much blank page where you as a group can think about the, all those things that you could do to make this the most horrible um, virtual experience that you can think of, okay? So um, when you go into, be, into breakout rooms, we're going to give you uh, probably about four minutes to be your, your most, your most deep yourself and just write um, all those things that could you, you could do to run the worst possible, your nightmare virtual event. JP, when you're ready. All right, people are coming back. Welcome back. Okay. Hello. Good. If you, as people are coming back, if you felt go. in good form for your um, most of your ones, can you give me a, a reaction, a thumbs up? A thumbs up. Getting thumbs up. Good. Good. I'm going to give you applause instead. Hmm? Okay. Uh, getting thumbs up. Do you worry no most of you? Okay. So you've done that. What we're going to do is uh, we're going to recreate the 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 same, hopefully the same uh, meet uh, breakout rooms. Um, what we'd like you to do now is that when you're considering all these most devious things that you have come up with, I would like you to consider how many of, you, of them you are either doing yourself or experiencing. Actually, no, you're doing yourself even better. Yeah. So if you go back to the same page, to the same document that you were um, doing as a group, you should be in the same group in the same in the breakout. Go back to it and think about these are the things that I'm doing. So, uh, initialize, highlight, however you, th you think is better for your group, okay? So you're going to have about two minutes to do this. So it's a quick pass. Um, go back to those documents and, 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 and you know, which, which things are you actually doing yourselves when you do your sessions. Let's go back to the meter rooms.
So we're coming back. Well, I'm only back because I clicked on the thing when I didn't mean to. <laughs> and, 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 and I don't know how long you gave us there, but we didn't even get... We, we were having the conversation about which liberating structure exercise was this. Ah. Well, it, which one is it? Because I've done it this in the last in the last week. So for me, for me, it's called um, we call it the, in some ways it's the anti program, but in liberating structures they call it trees. Trees. I thought it was trees. Mm -hmm. I said trees, didn't I, Jack? Mm -hmm. Which is a couple of. Them. It's only a, it was a, a, a two minute quick pass. So for people, we'll be coming back um, pretty much now. Is it, JP? Thanks, Jamie. Yeah. Let's see. Okay, this is Fast and Furious. Worst cut off ever. <laughs> Jose, I've never, Jose, I've never been thrown in and out of breakout rooms like this before. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling a wee bit sick. <laughs> Big <laughs> roller coaster. <laughs> it's too fast, eh? Okay, so. Um, so the, the interesting thing about what happened there um, in doing, uh, and it's, a, it's an accelerated break, uh, session in there, is that if you notice one thing that we did, and this is about simplicity um, later on, is I gave you the, fir the, first, the first time you went to this Word document, you had a single activity to do, which is capture things. Rather than then also then say which one, I give you multiple tasks, came back to, this, to, to the lobby, so that kind of like creates a break and then give you a single instruction to go back to the breakout rooms and do the highlighting on the selection. Now you're back in this session again. So single instructions, single activities makes things less complex, makes things clearer, hopefully. Okay. The last piece that I need you to do with this is that an individual activity is of all the things that you capture, there might be one of those things that you are committing or you would like to say, I'm going to make this different personally okay so i don't want you to do anything yet when you think about that one i'm going to give you about a minute to do this what we're going to do is create a a chat storm on the chat here on zoom i would like you to type it down but do not press enter just type down what's the one thing that you would like to make different yourself after this Okay, but don't type it. Don't don't type it, but don't press enter. And I'm going Sorry, to give you about. Where, where are we typing that in the on, chat? On the chat, yes. Okay, Here on Zoom. Don't type it. Don't, don't type it, but don't press enter. So I will let you all, everyone, to have like that minute of reflection. So. Um, and what was the now. core? Of, was the core of the idea to type in? Type the one of all these things that you identify that you would like to potentially do different. Well, there's one thing there that you may say, I want to do it differently myself. Yeah. So select that one of all the things that you were exploring. One minute. Okay. So if don't press enter yet, but um, we've got about 10 seconds more. So you can, if you want to type, What's that one thing? And when when I say yeah, when I say go, then you you can press enter. So let's try. Three, two, one, go. Boom. <laughs> Obviously, there's not something that we're gonna pick up. Like I'm going and look at all of these things at the moment, but what we are, what we have done is giving everybody an opportunity to have a little bit of reflection. And then we can have everybody um, put in their voice. That's a way of creating a little bit of equal voice, giving, giving different personalities and different thinking patterns to people to do it. So rather than if we start from the beginning, people typing or people talking, what you end up having is potentially um, group think and reduce the reduce things. Okay, so it's just a simple example of this. Um, if you're interested in this kind of technique that we just done, uh, the, this exercise, it's based on anti-problem, on liberating structures, living structure called trees and, and things like that. Okay. So in terms of preparation, then the things that we things that we have seen today uh, so far is we need to familiarize, familiarize ourselves with the technology. We are still learning how to use the technology with different groups 
sizes and so on, and the virtual environments that we have. But we also need to make sure that if you're organizing an event or you're using a training class, perhaps the things that you need to do is to organize some sort of like pre-work, pre-workshop activity that allows people to get used to the technology so that the first time that they come into the technology is not at the workshop itself. Yeah, there is nothing worse in a virtual environment than to start a session where you spend the first 45 minutes fighting the technology. So create some sort of like activity that helps people do something that is relevant for the workshop and they can also get familiar with the technologies that we're gonna use. Um, do things like um, sending out um, a checklist so people are ready. So for example, in, in us in Actinio, we have a checklist that we are sending to our people attending our virtual classes. And these checklists, some of these are things that they should do a week before, the day before, half an hour before the session. This is creating readiness conditions. Yeah, install the right software. Make sure that you have access. If you're using Zoom, make sure that you have access to Zoom. If we're gonna do um, a class, make sure that you have a, you have downloaded the materials out for the class. Make sure that people are ready. Yeah, and we are prepared. Um, what else? Um, other things is like you um, might want to, for example, at the beginning of the session, I, I gave you these instructions, like if there is a, there is a if we have a failure, there is, this is a recovery plan. So have a recovery plan. Um, and really, really important, design what you're gonna do for the 20% of the participants who might not be as advanced, so lower 20% of participants that might not be as advanced as we might be, or they, don't, they might not have the technology that we might have. So don't assume that everybody has the latest laptop, latest camera, latest microphones, latest access, broadband, okay? And have, have a plan B, have a plan Z, have a plan D. Like if, for example, my laptop had a problem and I couldn't see what I, what I write, I've got a printout of all the slides. Um, at least I could read them out, okay? Um, so preparation really, really matters. Um, there is a really important thing, and this is like, um, I'm gonna um, show you, I'm gonna quote Judy Rees, who is one of our inspirations for doing um, remote facilitation. And I really like this, what she calls um, her and her husband, Steve, um, Rees McCann, what they call the double loop, double doom loop. We, we go into events with having a low expectation of what the event is gonna do. And that leads to poor engagement. And poor engagement leads to poor events and poor experiences. Um, so by the time that we go to the next event, we go already there with low expectations and it gets just a, a, a terrible cycle. We can, we can hopefully do better. And in terms of preparation, this is something that happened last week. How many of you, um, um, how many of you use, use Mural? Last week, Mural was, um, I think it's last Wednesday or Thursday, Mural went down for most of the day. Um, you have the, the availability of the API. And I know that in the training communities, a lot of classes were com seriously compromised because there was no plan B. Um, everything that the class had done was designed just to work with Mural. So think about if Mural fails, what would you do? If you're doing a session or a workshop and you have presentations like this in, in person, you will say, well, you know, if the TV fails, so I'll have no projector, what will I do? Oh, I'll go to Flipchart. But what are the equivalents in your virtual environments? For us, for example, if, if Mural fails, we have a down, sort of like a simpler version of, of activities that we will do in Jamboard. Yeah? So we always, we're always thinking about what will be our, our downgrade of option if it doesn't work. Okay? Happy with that? So, thank you. I'm seeing some thumbs up. Awesome. I was going to ask for those. Um, and this um, comes back to the next quick topic, which is I'm running out of time. I'm really sorry. We said about 10 minutes late. Um, is uh, the idea of simplicity. One thing that I said, keep it simple. Make sure that people focus. So I said, like, create sing single topic activities. And things like half simple feedback mechanisms for the participants. One of the things that you're using is these reactions. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but in your Zoom, when you open the participant chat, 
uh, the participant list, um, most of you will be, if you have the latest version of Zoom, will be see things like a green tick box or checkbox, a red cross, you can say go slower, go faster, you can even ask for a coffee break. So um, if you are looking at those things, could you give me a, a, green, a green tick? So where is that stuff? Because I keep in, randomly seeing it and not in, seeing it. In, in Zoom, if you go to the participant list, it should show you a list of, uh, uh, you will see a green check. I can see some people doing it already. Um, you have a green check. It says yes, no, go slower, go faster. Um, you can ask for coffee. You can have an, uh, uh, a clap, um, I think. Oh, well, that's been worth the whole evening finding that because I've seen that <laughs> randomly over the last couple of weeks and not been able to find it. Thank that's you. What it is. <laughs> Thank you. I think what for evening is. meetups, you need a glass of wine, though, rather than just a coffee. Hey, I agree with you entirely. <laughs> that's just Which me. Is, well, you might go with um, <laughs> more um, offline versions. So I don't know if you're familiar with the very famous um, super cards from Lisette Sutherland. Um, so you could do things like telling people, hey, you're on mute, so you can have a message. They are a little bit glossy. Hey, I can see some people using them. But it's a way of doing messages. In, uh, in Actinio, we just uh, collaborated with our friend Seth, who has more talent than us in drawing. And we created things like um, messages like time to wrap. So if a conversation is going on and on and on and on, this is a non-violent way to say, to signal, can we try to start wrap up the conversation? We have been using cards like this for a few years in in-person classes. So this is the, the digital version. We could also say, hey, it's time to move on, enough. Okay, and we have a, a set which has like, um, I want to hear more, we may have a coffee break, I need a toilet break. So it's a way of giving feedback, room, feedback um, within the class or within the, the workshop. Cool. Um, you will have the, the links to these things if you want to download them in the um, uh, in the slides. Okay. Um, so we're going to talk about tools. But before we go, out, we, we we talk about tools. Um, I would like to do a little another exercise to simplicity. One of the things like don't overdo the tools. Keep it as simple as possible with the fewest number of tools that you can. I am doing exactly the opposite in trying to show you different tools. Um, so apologies for that. I'm going to show you yet a different tool, um, and this one is Mentimeter. I don't know how many of you um, have used it before, but if you go to menti.com and you enter that code, what I would like you to do there is you have a, a five choices, five words. Um, I would like you to um, put the top five tools that you get to use at the moment in this virtual world that we are working on, okay? So you go to menti.com and enter the code, and then you have an option to enter your top five tools that you're using. We're going to see which ones are the, the most popular ones at the moment. You've got the instructions there still. Everyone okay with us? Yeah, there we are. Yeah, so there seems to be a few big winners here. It's really interesting to see um, Zoom as the, the center. It's, it, they have been stellar in this thing. The other day we were in, in a webinar where there were two 2.7k, almost 3,000 participants, um, and Zoom was handling it. It was absolutely impressive to see. Um, and sessions like this with everybody's on, on video and all the stuff, is, is, they have been stellar. Um, don't get um, surprised. This is now a multi-billion um, battle with all the big providers about who wins this 
video conferencing. And um, I can see a lot of the criticism of Zoom, and they have made mistakes, but they're resolving things. But also think about the, the multi-billion um, battle that they, are, that they are fighting, all these companies. Um, in, in Actinio, at the moment, the, the kind of tools that we are using, I've seen most of those names appear there. Um, Zoom and Microsoft Teams. Um, we, our choice is Zoom, but we have clients that don't want Zoom, so we have to use Teams. Um, we're using uh, Miro, Mural, Jamboard. Another, another whiteboard that is really interesting, uh, um, we're experimenting with it at the moment, it's called Explain Everything. Um, Slido for polls and questions, poll everywhere, Mentimeter, Kahoot, and then simple Google Docs, simple Slack, and the chat. Um, so those many of those tools were coming, were, were, were there. Okay, so um, just to finish, I mean, I'm not going to cover much more. Um, so we we had the last three the last three trumps, uh, one one of, uh, virtual trumps, uh, one of them was um, about adaptation. One of the things that we're seeing a lot at the moment is that we're trying to replicate what the in-person environments did. And we're no longer in the, we're not using um, uh, in-person environments, we're using virtual environments. You being virtual offers us new opportunities and also new constraints. Um, so virtual events can be as good as any presentation, or any workshop, any training class, but we have to design it well. So the sort of things that we need to go back and think about, what's the purpose of this activity? What are we trying to learn, discuss, find out? And if I can do it with the same approach that I did in person, awesome, just reuse it. But if you can't, then you have to redesign it. And we need to redesign it going back, totally back to the, to the, um, um, to the purpose of the activity and then build it up from, from scratch again. Maybe use different tools, maybe use different paths. Maybe there are already solutions out there which do this. I mean, I'm seeing, for example, in the Kanban community, uh, people are trying to figure out how to replicate, if you're familiar with Get Kanban, how to do Get Kanban online. And I see people literally trying to code a Get Kanban online. Um, there is already something called Twig online that people can use. Um, so you can get the same outcomes without having to replicate what, you know, or try to code what was already in person. Um, so. You know, but it's very, very important to adapt what we do to the to the virtual environments. Um, in terms of pairing, um, as you notice, I mean, JP has been assisting me today as, as a producer. So he has been dealing mostly with the technology, with the breakout rooms, sending people in and out. I would have not been able to handle this at all. And having um, co-training, co-facilitating, having a producer, um, those kind of roles are even more important. Um, doing these things solo, uh, it's going to be, well, it's, it's extra complicated. And it's, it's one of the things that every expert out there is doing is saying, use a producer, um, co collaborate with someone doing the sessions. Um, and the final thing that I wanted to do is to say um, about um, doing things off, off air, because we are doing virtually doesn't mean that everything has to be virtual. No, no, we don't have to do big lectures. We don't have to... Um, everything do new activities and stuff. We have the opportunity to take things offline, off air. Um, they might be online, but they might be off air. So for example, if we're doing training, we, we are doing training that only lasts um, three hours every day. So for example, we're spreading our two day training um, into uh, four afternoon sessions on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday off, it's a rest day, Thursday, Friday, because I don't know whether you are finding these online sessions that get quite tiring. So we're making smaller sessions, shorter sessions, and we use the in-between times, like for example, the mornings or the afternoons, or even the Wednesday in between, um, as an opportunity to do some over reading, let people read on their own, find information on their own, do activities on their own, rather than having to do it on the live virtual environment. And, and that allows a lot of new opportunities as well to do stuff like that, which is, which is quite powerful. Okay, so, um, that's going to be uh, the end. Um, I've just um, got one final thing that I wanted to do. And again, in, your, in the chat, we're going to use the chat again. Um, I would like uh, to see, hopefully you found this um, a useful session. Um, and I would like you to see if um, there is one idea that you would like from this session that you would like to try 
um, going forward and when would you try to do that. Um, if you can think about it for a minute and then type it on the on, on the chat again. Um, and I would like to say thank you. Um, but um, either Q&A, uh, we can, um, I'm happy to continue for a little bit longer, but otherwise uh, um, uh, South needs to close the session and then we can continue with a bit of Q&A. But let's give you a minute if you want to um, write on the chat. So I'm saying signal cards, desynchronized activities, breaker rooms and physical cards, yeah. Plan Bs and Plan Cs, very important. Trial reruns is good. Mentimeter, yeah, Mentimeter is a great tool. And I think that this idea of like one activity per, one, one, only one question per activity is very, very important for, for simplicity. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, as I say, um, Seth, if you want to um, go on into um, the close, and then I'm, I'm happy to stay behind and we can look at the Q&A for those that want to stay. I, I don't want to take more of your time, it's late. Um, so if you are leaving now, thank you very much. Um, it's been great. Um, and um, if you're staying, then we'll, we'll talk in a minute. Over to Seth. Thanks, Rosie. Brilliant session. Really good. Um, I think a lot of us would have got a lot out of that because we're all moving to that sort of virtual world completely. As we all know, and we're all having sort of varying degrees of success trying to make these tools work. And, you know, I think you suggested lots of great things, thinking about backup plans and mm -hmm. trying to get somebody to help, you know, facilitate the sessions as JP did admirably tonight. If you've got a large group, you can't really do that without having some of them there doing all that behind the scenes, it's, it's not practical for you to do all that and deliver your content. So yeah, brilliant, really good. Um, happy to open it up. We, we usually just have a quick Q&A and then we, we close it off at about half eight. Um, so if anybody has any burning questions and you're happy to take them, yeah. um, I'm, I'm happy to let, let, let people sort of yeah. unmute and then ask a quick question if they want. No, no harm in trying that. Yes. Um, and then I'll just close yeah. with some community announcements. And then we'll, yeah. we'll, uh, I'll let everybody get on uh, with the remainder of the evening. Cool. Um, in the slide, though, there is only one question, so maybe we 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 should start with that. It's, I don't know if Ian is here. Um, he was asking how to deal with the technology and approaches to handle psychological safety issues. Um, yeah, that's right. So, um, I, I guess in a sort of normal setup, there's things like sort of liberating structures that you can maybe draw on. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're in a different world now. So um, yeah, I just wondered uh, what your thoughts were on um, uh, how to address mm -hmm. some of these things that are gonna crop up. Yeah, so the, the first thing, I, when I started, one of the things that I tried to do again for simple psychological safety was this, this idea of the, the right to pass. Uh, I don't know if I'm getting it in my screen. Yeah. You just get it. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah, um, and that was that was a, is is one of the things I was saying. Like, look, um, same thing as in person. Yeah, it's an invite, it's an invitation to participate, it's an invitation to get engaged. Let's not force people to go into breakout rooms and do things or do this or do that. Um, so that's one way. Um, I think simplifying things is is is, is useful. Um, the the idea of doing things smaller, making people using the breakout rooms is that you can get a smaller group where so people can have equal voice. It's another aspect of, um, for me, psychological, um, psychological safety that matters as well. Um, so give, give people the opportunity to speak up in the smaller groups. Maybe we come back and we don't. I, I didn't use, I didn't do anything about, for example, um, coming back and then do feedback sessions or debriefs or anything like that. But having the opportunity to do things in the small groups creates more safety as well. Um, I, anybody else has other ideas, any suggestions, I will be happy to, to to hear other, other contributions. Yeah, I mean, I like the right to pass, um, mm -hmm. but I guess, I guess the thing is, where do you then go from there? If you do, <laughs> you know, if you if if the response back from you know a number is actually, do you know what? I'm going to pass out on that. Um, so 
Yeah, but if if that's if if you start to, if at least the people have people have the opportunity to say I have I need the right of pass, um, and that might be I'm not engaged or I'm not feeling safe or whatever it is, um, you can that that tells you something. I mean, the, the interesting thing about when you're doing um, breakout rooms as well is that um, you don't have to join the breakout room straight away. Yeah, so you could opt out to stay outside. And that, for example, for me as a facilitator and JP as the producer there, it might allow us to say, okay, is there anything we can do? Is there any any, any dynamic that is not working? You could stay behind and, and talk to the facilitator to say, um, can we can we resolve these things? Um, some of the cards that we have about the time to wrap up and the move on, um, again, is 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 potentially a a non-violent way of indicating that the conversation is just going on for too long. So the time to wrap is almost like a yellow card in, in as a referee and warning you, don't be naughty. Let's let's wrap it up. Yeah, in this conversation, uh, move on is more like the red card. It's like okay, we need to stop now. We, we are losing the room. Yeah. Um, so again, um, but you require a little bit of uh, enough trust and safety within the group to be able to do that. Um, we use this for a few years now um, in in-person activities, and I've I've been in that situation with, with for example, there is people that take too much time or don't, people that are quite dominating, um, you, can, you, can, you can use these things to, to try to help that. Again, as a, um, you have someone that, for example, is very domineering in the, in the conversations, what you can do as well uh, is you're sending people to the breakout rooms, you keep that person in particular in the lobby, and it gives you opportunity to have a chat with that person to say, like, look, you're, you're, you're not letting other people speak. Mm -hmm. um, can you please? Yeah, tame it down a little bit or whatever. So, and I know so, that I was, I'm speaking a lot. So, someone else, please. So, was that why I was sat in a room all by myself then? Thank you. No. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was just that was, that was purely purely unintentional today. <laughs> So, uh, so, so these are also mm -hmm. things that you would actually use in the classroom. So, um, mm -hmm. uh, to to help bolster that. Uh, psychological safety obviously I'm, I'm taking it from a different approach being a scrum master in a mm -hmm. software development team and trying mm -hmm. to maintain the safety of the team and not being distracted by everything else going on um, mm -hmm. so are there any sort of techniques um, to, to actually try and uh, 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 better reassure people um, you know because things like recording of conversations etc are, are very much frowned upon by myself um, yes. in terms of that's then evidence that can be used later um, yes. for, 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 for punishing somebody I'll so, pause now <laughs> so that, that's, a, that's a very that's a very good point about the recording um, we were talking about before we started today um, our choice would have been probably not to do record the session um, and not to record sessions and, and this is for example a conversation having with uh, with judy Reyes is like avoid recordings uh, one is because it can change our behaviors um also we might we might forget that recording is going on and we might say things maybe not too candidly or too candidly mm -hmm. and that could be yeah i i i and many times i i, I don't record the sessions that we have in an in-person workshop we don't have a camera recording what people are seeing on things like that. So I tend to I, I tend to prefer not recording the sessions, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Unless the group agrees that there is someone missing and it's important for them to know what was going on and we are all agreeing. But this is one of the things that I will do as consensus as consensus. It's one, there's, one, there's one thing to kind of uh, add as a slightly different view, uh, slant mm -hmm. on this. If you are talking about working agreements, often people skip or just have these kind of tribal spoken working agreements when they're working with teams. Uh, it's really, really important in these kinds of environments to actually have something explicit, visible, which everyone's agreed on. These are the hours I'm available. This is how you get hold of me. Um, you know, these are the, my going to be my response times, all this kind of stuff. Uh, and if you've got a globally distributed as well, it's like, well, what time is it acceptable to send somebody a text message? Right, you know, if you got a, if you if you got a colleague in New Zealand, you don't send it to them at three o'clock in the morning, especially yeah. maybe if they've got like an elderly relative who they're on call for and that yeah. sort of stuff. So there's a lot of other other really really good things, but it, it, you've got to just try that 
bit harder yes. uh, taking it away from the training room into working with teams to make this yeah. stuff work well. Speaking it's of great, colleagues uh, in New Zealand, we do have uh, Lucy from New Zealand with her hand up, <laughs> waiting patiently to ask her question. So, okay, uh, just just quickly. I mean, one thing that um, Jack uh, in the, in chat he he wrote, and I think it's a great one. Um, you can same impose the, the 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 functionality of calling for help. Um, so if you're in the breakout room and people are, and the breakout room is not going well. <clears throat> It's a great point, Jack. Thank you. Um, you can call for help, and that means that the the, the host and the co-host will get a message. So it's a signal for us to potentially go there. It could be to resolve a, a technical issue, but it could be to maybe facilitate what's going on in that session. Yeah. So that's a great one. Um, who's next? Lucy. Lucy. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, Lucy. Sorry, beg your pardon. Thank you, Leah. There's no problem. Um, that you've probably just answered it. Actually, I was going mm. to ask, how do we address those issues where we may have just a single person in that breakout room talking to themselves. Yeah. So you're, if, you're, if you're doing that, you can call for help and then as a facilitator, you go there and you could say, hey, um, I'm only hearing one person. Um, you can send a message to the, to the hosts um, from, within the, 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 um, from within the breakout room. So you can also, I think, send a, a private message to say, we need help. Um, someone is someone's just dominating this so just uh, yeah. from from my perspective what i was doing in the background which it's it's quite hard to do when you've got this many meeting rooms and some people were in them but not in them uh yes. is i was trying to identify where people had kind of got orphaned and moved them before it became a problem but um yeah. you know when you've got this many people that's actually quite a lot of hard work so it's another oh. reason to have one or more helpers in the background doing this yes and three and three minutes only um Okay, so we have, um, um, I saw Jasmine had, Jasmine, you have had your hands uh, your yeah, hand know, raised so for a long time. Yeah. Hi, Jasmine. Jasmine, you're Hi. in Berlin, yeah? Yes, I'm in Berlin. Uh, awesome session. Thank you for that. I have a question, um, pretty simple. Um, it's my first time using Zoom. Uh, we work with Google Hangouts. This breakout um, uh, concept sounds really cool. Mm -hmm. Do you think that, or do you know if they have any equal um, to this system, or is this a particular feature only for Zoom? I see heads are nodding and shaking. I, 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 other tools have breakouts, and breakouts is not exclusive to Zoom. What Zoom has at the moment is that you can have, I mean, just in my screen right now, I can see, what is it, five times, 25 people, I think. And then you can go, um, you can see um, next to, you've seen all the, all the 25 people, you, you have the blue um, arrows to the right and left. Um, so you can go to the next room and the next room. So we have still 40 people in here. You can only see 25 at the same time. I don't know of any other tool that is capable of having 25 video links at the same time or 40 or 100 um so that's where zoom it's it has been impressive but breakout rooms is is, is a functionality that um i think microsoft teams has it um, um cisco webex has it um, go to meeting go to webinar have it um i'm not sure if um hand, uh, hangouts have it is google meet now yeah i actually don't know if they have it i don't i don't think they have it but um I guess um, worst case, we more. just have to prepare um, some single um, hangout links and then yeah. um, try to divide the people into the room. To learn. Yeah. yeah. So um, I know that what, what, when we have not had breakouts, you end up, I haven't had to do it, but I know some friends have had to do it, that you have prepared the breakout session separately. And literally, people have to leave the session, go to the breakouts, come back. What you lose as a facilitator is the opportunity, what JP was doing, to say, okay, I put a timer and you are going to the breakout and you're coming back from the breakout seamlessly. Actually, for timekeeping, this is awesome because it's like, you know, in, in in-person meetings, like, hey, we go like five minutes, 10 minutes, and then it just goes on and on. With, with this thing, you're, you put the timer and people go into the breakouts and come back at the time, which is quite powerful. Yeah. Okay, yeah? well, thank you. No, excellent. Um, who else? Uh, go there, Dan Brown. Raised hand. Do I? You have a raised hand. I know it was a clap. Did, did have, was that clap? It was a clap. I just clapped. The clap. The clap. Sorry, man. Sorry, sorry. I just say, Maria. Well, I was, uh, this was a thumbs up. <laughs> I was, uh, I'm I was really a thumbs up. Thank you. 
I'm not getting it's too small I'm, for I'm me. I'm loving how we're now um, sort of misreading the, the different sort of emotions that are. I, I, yeah, you see that. I think, I think, too small I, think, uh, yeah. I think we've maybe got time for one more if there is one, then it, yes. we need to wrap up because we're getting close to the time. Yes. So we've got about five minutes left, so maybe time for one more if, if there is one. If somebody actually legitimately has their hand up, I don't see anyone. Any final questions? Going once, going twice, as I say. No, I think we're good. Oh, Simon's are you I, I can see Simon. Simon? Yeah, I wanted to reinforce the um, Mentimeter thing mm -hmm. that we're trying to collect some data. Mm -hmm. Don mm -hmm. was looking for data for, to give to future speakers about um, makeup of audience. Mm -hmm. And um, so we set a little Mentimeter thing up to ask people, what's your job role? Where are you from? Etc. and I'll post the link or if one of you two, Don or South, want to put it up there before I get sure. to it. So okay. one, thing, one, thing, one thing we can do is like show, to, put it in the meetup, in the meetup uh, um, pages as well later on. Yeah, no, that would be, that'd be fun. I did yes, that before the meeting. Good. Yep, cool. no, but, that's great. Good but reminder. if we put it in the chat now, it's easy for people to get to. Yes. Great, fab. Brilliant, well, fantastic. Sorry, can, can oh. I just ask one more question? Yeah. Um, uh, <clears throat> starting the meeting is important. I'm assuming mm. ending the meeting is important. So mm. how do you make sure that people don't just drift away? <laughs> you, <laughs> you, need, you need to be not Spanish like me, which I don't know anything about time. It's just a, it's an esoteric concept. Um, so that's where the preparation comes in as well. I mean, one thing, for example, we are doing with our, with our sessions, um, is we are going through, we're, we're having a, a lesson plans and session plans and workshop plans where we're trying to design the time that we have, allowing time for some additional unknowns, rabbit holes and things like that. But it's really important to, what you say, start, start on time and, and end on time. So, I mean, I'm mindful that uh, stuff said 8.30 so well, I, I know you, Jose, so I'm I'm I'm, I'm keep my eye on you. Um, <laughs> so, no, it, no, it's absolutely it's a, it's it's an excellent question, and I think yes. in, certainly in these sessions, as we've moved to the virtual environment, environment, you know, we've had to do a lot of learning ourselves, myself, Donald, and other members of the team. And as we've gone from one session to the next, we've just you know built our understanding and kept learning from our you know, the things that might not have gone as well in the previous sessions and just kept applying them and building on them. And I think one of the things is, as we said in one of our breakout sessions, is to, you know, be very clear about expectations. So, you know, we start at seven. We typically start at five past because we give people five minutes or so just to hop on after their dinner. Um, the session usually, the speaker normally speaks for about 45 minutes or so. And then we have, you know, 15, 20 minutes for QA, then a wrap up and we basically try to finish pretty much on time at 8.30 and that's an expectation we yeah. like to set and try to stick to that. So I've now got two minutes to wrap this up if I'm to uh, be true to my uh, my own aspiration here. So yeah, just wanted to say thanks, Jose. That was absolutely brilliant. Really enjoyed it. Nice and interactive. And I don't want to overlook our, our friend behind the scenes um, pulling the strings and making it all happen. So thanks, JP. Really good. Uh, I, I think everybody got a lot out of that. I certainly learned a lot, and I'm going to give you both a virtual clap. There you go. Uh, so <laughs> you've, got, you've got the virtual clap coming. Just a and couple it. of quick.